guys, it's your boy KC Fowler, one half of the Fowler's podcast, host of the Melanin Warriors podcast. Sorry, I've been absent on a couple of weeks of episodes of the Melanin Warriors, but I'm back with something a little new. It's called the Melanin Warriors Presents Melanin Innovators, and we're going to kick this bad boy off with Josiah Henson. So who is Josiah Henson? His, his likeness was used for the book titled Uncle Tom's Cabin. He was not the Uncle Tom the books perceived him to be. Now, the definition that everybody knows to be called as uh, Uncle Tom is a black man considered to be excessively obedient or servile to white people. And that was definitely, definitely not Josiah Henson that y'all gonna come to see. So Henson was born a slave in Charles County, Maryland, where he experienced all hardships and cruelties of a slave. He and his father were enslaved by Francis Newman and his mother and siblings were enslaved by another man, a Dr. Josiah McPherson. As a boy, he witnessed his father being punished for standing up to an overseer. He watched that his father received a hundred lashes. Not only did his father receive a hundred lashes, but his right ear was nailed to a whipping post and they cut it off and then they sold him to Alabama. Himself and his mother suffered their own physical abuse from these people, being beaten by who some believe was another slave named Sambo who was the actual likeness to Uncle Tom. Just check it out. Years later, Josiah was told that he could buy his freedom for $300. After he earned his $300, ladies and gentlemen, the slave owner raised the price on him. Afterwards, he learned he was going to be sold and separated from his wife and kids. I hope you guys enjoying the episode so far. I had to take a quick pause and shout out to Isla Nanny Creations for all your creative needs from shirts to ashtrays to keychains to cups to wreaths for christmas all sorts of occasions valentine's day which is you know right around the corner everything you know she can do that she got you y'all go ahead and hit miss janae k fowler up on facebook or instagram is Nanny creations y'all she created i'm telling you i love so after that you know he figured it was enough was enough so he convinced his wife to escape and they started by creating a large knapsack big enough to carry their children. So they carried their children, my military folks. They pretty much did a ruck with their children. Amazing, freaking amazing. During the journey for freedom, his wife fainted due to exhaustion, but soon was met by a Native American tribe. And there, the Native Americans were cool. You know, they received food and rest from these amazing people. And then they were able to continue their journey. During the journey, they continued until they met a ship captain who agreed to transport them to Buffalo, New York. From there, they made their way to Canada. And on October 28, 1830, Josiah Henson and his family became free. Josiah Henson worked on many farms when he got to Canada to include Fort Erie. And he moved to Waterloo and finally to Colchester in 1834 is where he set up his melanin settlement on rented land. After earning enough money, he sent his eldest son to school. And his eldest son, which his name was Tom, used his school knowledge and taught his father how to read. Henson became literate and he used this gift of reading and was able to create a community for escaped slaves in Canada called Dawn Settlement. The settlement eventually reached 500 melanin people. That's 500 escaped slaves made it to the Dawn Settlement. Henson also served in the Canadian Army as an officer leading a Maryland militia unit during the Canadian Rebellion of 1837. In 1838, Henson and his militia were successful in capturing the ship and cutting off the supply lines in Southwest Canada, you know, from the rebels or whatnot. So after slavery was abolished, many residents of the settlement returned to the U.S., but Henson and his wife continued to stay right where they were in Canada. Henson became a spiritual leader or reverend, if you will, in the community and took trips to the United States and Great Britain, even meeting Queen Victoria. In Britain, he spoke publicly to audiences and using these these speaking moments, if you will, he raised funds for his community back in Canada. He even conducted several trips to Kentucky where he, he escaped from and guided those that were still enslaved from Kentucky to Canada where they received their freedom at the Dawn Settlement. Josiah eventually passed away, ladies and gentlemen, on May 5th, 1883 at the age of 93. 
He was the first melanin person to have his likeness on a Canadian stamp. He was also recognized in 1999 by the Historic Sites and Monuments Board of Canada as being a national, a national historic person. So Josiah Henson, ladies and gentlemen, this melanin warrior, this melanin innovator was an author, uh, abolitionist, soldier, minister, and truly, truly a melanin innovator and a melanin warrior who led his family to freedom and continued to pursue helping out his fellow melanin brothers and sisters leading from the front and building for his own people an entire community just for his people. And you know, that that's episode one guys of the Melanin Warriors presents the Melanin Innovators. And I couldn't have started it better off, you know, with, with Josiah Henson, great story, great Melanin Warrior, great Melanin Innovator guys. Make sure y'all check out the Melanin Warriors podcast. Make sure y'all like, subscribe, share, check, check me out on TikTok, Instagram, And if you don't stand for something, you're going to fall for anything. It's your boy.